Hello, after Corona started, everybody has been worrying about their immunity. They want to have a strong immunity with a strong fit body, which will ward off all the germs that are floating and getting into our system and causing illness and death. We are also trying to help our body. Some people are using protective to prevent the germs from coming near us. We are carrying bottles to kill the germs. We are trying to understand how antibodies and immunity develops after getting COVID. The cells of our immune system start making antibodies which go to the germs whether they are bacteria or viruses and trap them and after they are trapped they can be destroyed by immune cells of the body. But this is only a very small part of the immunity system that we have. Antigens, antibodies is one part of it. In fact, it is the latest that has developed just a few million years ago. Whereas the immune system for the animal kingdom started developing a billion years ago. And all the weapons that our body has are many fold, maybe 20 fold more than what we see when we look at the antibodies in the blood. You all know that the antibodies are formed by immune cells in the lymph nodes, but this is not the only thing that the lymph nodes are doing. They have many other kinds of cells which don't make antibodies. They are called T-cells and there are 30 different types. Your lung has its own immunity system, your airways, nose and sinuses have their own immunity system. Your intestine has a very powerful immunity system. Your skin has a very powerful immunity system. In fact, the job of the whole body is to protect itself and live with the other living creatures of the planet, not as a fighter but in harmony. So the immune system that we think about, that antibodies will be formed, this is called adaptive immunity. That means this is the immunity that we invoke and develop after we meet a germ. There is another kind of adaptive immunity which is much, much more important for viruses like coronavirus and that is called cell-mediated immunity which doesn't have any antibodies. But apart from this new system which is called adaptive immunity, there is a much bigger and much more powerful system called innate immunity. There is physical immunity, there are many chemicals that the body makes to kill and control bacteria. There are many cells that the body makes which are part of the immune system with nothing to do with antibodies, nothing to do with learning. They are already very learned, they are already very effective and they are called innate immunity system. Now, if you look at the animal kingdom, we always think of ourselves, but then there are other creatures that we know well of. And they have been far more successful than human beings. They have lived on the planet for much longer than we have, very successfully managing the germs and the other threats with a very, very effective immune system. The antigen-antibody system is in you know, just the last few creatures of the planet which have developed recently. The rest of them don't have antigens, antibodies, but they have very good immunity. Look at this creature, he won't have any antigens, antibody, but he has survived much longer than human beings. Guess where he lives? I've shown it because he lives on your face. This is the brevis mite or the face mite and it is always there from the day you are born. When your mother picks you up and kisses you, she gives you her brevis mites and they start living on your skin. They are small. This is a micro lens picture, so it looks big. But they are so small that you don't see them. But they live on your face, they multiply, they spend their lives on, the fa on your face from the day of our birth to the day of our death. Look at this one. 
This one is crawling and yes, it is on your skin. This is the mite which lives on the rest of the body. This also will come to you from your mother the day she picks, the you are born and she picks you up. And these actually sleep inside our hair follicles. They are small enough. But in the night when we are sleeping, they are on your skin, roaming around, partying and living their lives. Hundreds and hundreds of them for each of us. And they are not the only creatures that are there. Your skin is full of bacteria. And those bacteria actually are part of our immune system because these are bacteria that the body likes and maintains and nourishes and protects and keeps. It allows them to come inside. It makes special nutrition for them. The hair follicles make it. But watching over all these germs, these viruses in our skin is immune cells. They are there in the top layers. They are there in large numbers just below the top layers. And their job is to keep watching what is going on and to keep informed if there is anything which is dangerous for the body, any germ which is dangerous and to take immediate action. This is how the body functions. Not killing germs, but living in the planet with other living creatures in harmony and in partnership. What do you think is this? This is a bacteria which lives inside every cell of your body. And what are you? You and I are just animals. What is an animal? An animal is cells which, in which two bacteria live together. Long back, there were bacteria which lived separately. And then when two of them joined up, one started living inside the other. It is called animal kingdom. Bacteria which has another bacteria inside it. The bacteria that is inside it we now call mitochondria, but it is a separate living back organism with its own DNA and its own multiplication and its own job. And the cell which keeps this is called the animal cell. It gets lots and lots of energy from the mitochondria because the mitochondria when it is a bacteria, when it was a bacteria, its special ability was to combine carbon and oxygen and make lots of energy. The cell it made friends with, the bacteria it made friends with was a bacteria which could move around very well. So this energy was there from the mitochondria and the cell had this bacteria had the ability to move around and they made this very powerful combination that we call the animal kingdom. Look at this, this is something to do with the plant kingdom. It's in a very similar way the plant world developed. Two bacteria decided to join up and be a team. One was a very strong bacteria which had cellulose protective wall outside it. It lives in these kind of cells, cells with a wall around it. And the chloroplasts, which are the other bacteria which started living inside it, they were the power generators. They trap sunlight and they make carbon dioxide into carbon. So the sunlight gives them, gives the plant cells energy. And it is because these two bacteria joined up to make what we now call the plant kingdom. Of course, animals are very flexible because they don't have a cell wall. They have a flexible material to keep their cells integrity and strength. And this material is called cholesterol. Cholesterol is what made the animal kingdom along with the mitochondria bacteria and the cholesterol bacteria joining together. And the plant kingdom similarly was made from the chloroplast which traps sunlight for energy and the bacteria which had a very good strong wall, cellulose wall joining together to make the plant kingdom. That's how life was created. Look at this specimen. We say this is the oldest animal that ever lived on our planet. 
This Dickinsonia creature we know is an animal because the fossil has got traces of cholesterol. If it has got cholesterol, then by definition it is animal life. Agile, active, mobile and that happens because of cholesterol. And look at the agility which is inside your body. We can see our arms moving, we can see fishes swimming and the birds flying. But look at carefully the immune system, how it is working, very active. When the air goes through your nose, the hair trap out all the insects and you know that. And then it goes through the nasal passages which have got large caves, air pockets on the sides. Here the bacteria and the viruses which will go through the, along with the air are sampled and kept. The air sinuses work like an immune laboratory watching the air that we are getting, the germs that are in our environment, keeping them in the sinuses, looking after them, studying them, understanding how they function and understanding how to control them. This is how the body manages once some of the bacteria go down with the air into your air pipes, when we see them in an anatomy hall, it's just a pipe. But when you see it with a microscope, it has got these millions and millions of very active brooms called cilia. And they are pushing the virus back. Go up and go out of the airways. There are some goblet cells there which make the sticky mucus. It traps the bacteria and binds them into a helpless state. And then the cilia are very active brooms. And there are billions of them which are just throwing out everything. Once it comes on to your throat, you may cough and then swallow. And all the bacteria that dead enter are now actually swimming in very strong acid in your stomach and getting digested. They have become food for you. They are no longer a threat because your immune system works and this is the physical immune system. This is a very small part of the immune system. There are of course many more which we will study. But that immune system that is working for us, the various chemicals that are made, the various cells that are there, there are literally scores and scores of different specialized cells. There's all these physical ways of maintaining freedom from infection. These have developed over a billion years and they are very, very effective. Today, we are scared of coronaviruses. We don't even know that the coronaviruses have been kept in our nose, nasal sinuses, studied, understood by the body since the time we were born. They know what a coronavirus is. It's we who don't, didn't know about it. And now that we are scared, we are putting these masks over our face and saying that this will protect us. We are forgetting that there's a billion years of successful immunity which has kept us going. And that will protect us. This is only just causing some bacteria to grow on the humid paper and cloth that we are putting on our face. And breathing it in and telling the body you look after this also. When you are looking after Corona. It's just stuff right which is making us do things which do not look very healthy and definitely not so necessary. Masks have two purposes. If you are in the desert and there is a desert storm, cover your face with cloth. If you are a surgeon and you are operating, you need to keep talking. You have to talk to the nurses who are assisting you, to the assistant surgeons, you have to talk to the anesthetists, you have to talk to the technicians in the surgical because the lights and the anesthesia and everything has to be adjusted as you work. And if you are talking, you are spitting into the wound, so it will get infected. So masks were invented for that. We can't just say we will use it for anything and everything. We will use it for coronaviruses and to help our immunity. It has nothing to do with that. It can only give you a wet piece of paper full of bacteria which your body generally doesn't see and tells it to look after those in addition to the coronavirus challenge that it is trying to solve. 
These masks become dirty and wet very fast and they grow all kinds of bacteria that nobody has studied but everybody is convinced are going to help the body if we breathe them. So our entire immune system which is so big, let's just look at one or two names. Look at the natural killer cells. These are present in all animals. You don't require antigens and antibodies for it. These, if they see any cell is looking sick because it has got some viruses inside it or some bacteria inside it or some cancer inside it, they just move over and give it an injection of death. The moment the natural killer cell touches a sick cell, the sick cell just stops functioning. Imagine the virus has got inside us, it has found the cell to live in, it is making itself comfortable using the furniture of the cell, the energy supply of the cell, the proteins of the cell to live and multiply. The NK cell will come and say knock knock, put off the lights and let that cell die. There will be no multiplication and there will be no viruses thriving there, they too will have to die. That is the NK cell. Then the macrophages which have dozens of functions, the dendritic cells, the granulocytes. Look at this natural killer cell which will be able to kill the natural killer cell that you can see here will inject and any infected cell and the next thing will be that that cell is shut off, is not looking after viruses, it is just dying and killing the viruses. From a hotel room it has become a tombstone. Look at the, all the immune cells which are in your blood. Most of them are granulocytes and they don't belong to the antigen antibody system. They are Harakiri soldiers which attack any bacteria that they see and there are very many different types. And even the cells that make antibodies, the lymphocytes, more than half the lymphocytes are not for antibodies, they are for other jobs which we call cell mediated immunity. Look at all these antibodies, there are very many types, actually every antibody is different from the other because it holds the bacteria and grapples with it with a different shape and a different hold. But we can broadly categorize them into a few categories. The one that we measure in the blood is called IgG and this is the one that doctors talk about all the time. But which is the one which is secreted in and manufactured in the largest amounts. 80% of the antibody that we make is the one in the right bottom corner. It's called IgA. Its job is not to kill bacteria. This is an antibody which comes out into our sinuses, into our respiratory passages where the air goes in. It comes into all the mucosa, like the mucosa of the eye. And it stands there and watches over all the germs. The germs that the body likes, they are given first class treatment by this antibody. It will give them snacks, it will make them comfortable. It will bring them to the front seats and make them sit down and be next to the body. The others which it doesn't like and they are just passengers, like second class passengers in an airplane, those this antibody will send to the back. It will tell them to put on their seat belts, not move, not make a nuisance and just sit through the flight. This is the secretory IgA, the most, the biggest and the most manufactured antibody of our body. Its job is not to kill bacteria, its job is to mind them, to help them to stay quiet when they are on the skin, it helps the ones that the body likes, it pushes the ones that it doesn't like to the back seats and tells them to stay still. We can't discuss the whole immune system, in fact there is hardly a specialist available who even understands a part of it. But we must know that it is very big, very old, very effective and it's been extremely successful, that's why you are alive today it was going to get knocked out by any and every virus, we wouldn't be the flourishing species of the planet. 
and the immune system is bigger than what the textbooks say. HDL and LDL are actually part of the immune system in many ways. We think of them as something good and something bad which is floating around in our blood for no reason. But they have a very important job. The job of HDL is when there is a battle with bacteria and there is injury to the bacteria and they get killed, the body parts of the bacteria have to be removed. Those body parts are called endotoxins. They are not friendly to the body. They can cause fever, they can make us sick. And it is the job of the HDL to remove them. It is produced in the intestine, it goes around in the blood looking for any corpses, any dead bodies of cells and bacteria, picks them up and takes them to the liver where they will be disposed of. LDL we call bad cholesterol, but LDL actually has got double the job of HDL. When it is manufactured in the liver, its job is to carry those substances that the liver manufactured for the body, but which cannot be put in the blood because they don't dissolve in blood. So LDL is a package in which all these cholesterol, oil, vitamin A, vitamin D, all the things that the liver has to send to the body but cannot be dissolved in blood. They are packed and the LDL comes out filled with all these goodies for the body. It circulates and delivers them, that's its first job. It's the job of keeping all supplies available for the cells of the body. But on its return it does double duty. On its return it helps HDL pack up all these toxins. It helps HDL to pick up the toxins better and the two of them bring them back to the liver. They work together. This is what our LDL and HDL is. Very specialized parts of our life. Not, we cannot just say good or bad without even understanding what they are. Now this is the lady who cleans your house. She's got a bucket, she's got a broom. Can we say good and bad? Which is, which of these is good, which of these is bad? Is the HDL which works like a mop good or bad? Is the LDL which works like a bucket to take all the muck back into the liver good or bad? These are meaningless terms. They are both doing the body's job of keeping us alive, healthy, our blood clean. It's part of our immune system also. So immunity to coronaviruses is not going to be some vaccine which produces some antibody. Half of us are already immune to the virus in the sense that we don't even let it enter our body. Our innate immunity with cilia and all the other chemicals which are present under the blood, in the tissues, all the cells that are present, they kill it before it can enter. Remember, the body has been seeing coronaviruses from the time we were born. It knows how to tackle them. It has kept them in the sinuses for long periods to study them and understand them. There was a SARS-1 epidemic just 18 years ago and that virus was extremely similar to the new SARS-2 virus that we are calling COVID virus or coronavirus. And we had learned to deal with that virus. We know how to deal with its cousin who is very, very, very similar. So 30% of the immunity that we have and it doesn't and it is IgA which won't even allow coronavirus is to come near the body, it will keep all the friendly bacteria in the front rows and tell corona to stand back and get carried away by the cilia and coughed and into the stomach to be dipped in acid and fried. This is 30% of our immunity, innate is 70 which is not allowing the virus to even enter the body. Once it enters, then the adaptive immunity will solve it, but this is cell-mediated immunity. These are cells, T-lymphocytes, nothing to do with antigen antibodies. They go and attack any cell which has virus and kill it. And some of it they have learned, some of them they will learn when they see the virus. 
and then of course there is the innate immunity which is working with it. The plasma that we are giving and the IgG that it contains, this will be having only 1% of the role of protecting us from COVID because plasma antibody IgG is not important for viruses. We are also using all kinds of other mechanisms. Some people feel that some antibiotics or anti-malarials will improve our immunity. Some people feel that combination of medicines will. Some people are going to Ayurveda. Some people are going to the shopfuls of Ayurvedic substances, yoga, what not. Out of these, the only one which does affect the immunity slightly is the exercise. And if you understand how it affects, then you can look after your body better. See how exercise will help is by the effect it has on your body glucose. We think of glucose as the energy giving molecule of our body. Yes it is. Its job is to give instant energy. It is an explosive. It is not carbon meant which is going to join to oxygen. It is plenty of oxygen already present. When you have a lot of oxygen staying with carbon, you know what can happen, it can explode. And that's what happens when glucose gives energy. It can give energy by combining with oxygen also. The main reason why we keep at one teaspoonful of glucose in our blood is because if there is any bacteria, we will need explosive energy to kill it. And glucose is the explosive fuel which our immune cells use. It is the fuel of our immune cells. If you want to understand where the glucose is going, you can do a PET scan, give an injection of glucose, wait for some time and then looking for it with the scanner. It will go wherever there is infection in the body. If, it's, if there is a pneumonia, it will go to your lung. If there is a appendicitis, it will go to your appendix. If there is an abscess, it will go to your abscess. It is the fuel for fighting infection. And the body actually uses the blood glucose level as an activator of immune system. Whenever there is an infection threat, the body will raise the blood glucose level. And the rising of the blood glucose level tells the immune system all the various cells, scores and scores, all the various chemicals, scores and scores, all the various acute phase reaction which are basically the army that wakes up whenever there is a threat. All the scores and scores and scores and scores of immune activities start warming up and getting ready if the blood glucose goes up. And that's how body controls the immunity level and the fighting of the immune system. But keeping glucose in the body which is so reactive has one problem. It damages proteins. Anything it touches can get damaged. That's why our eyes get cataract, our brain gets dementia. We, our immune system, if it is activated because we are eating too much glucose, that's called the modern diet. You see, when we were living in the forest, we were not eating glucose. The moment you cut the forest and you start growing, crops like wheat and rice and sugarcane and fruits and potatoes, you switch your diet to glucose. Switching your diet to glucose is called modern lifestyle. And the diseases that modern lifestyle causes are because the glucose is going to be very active and very reactive and it's going to keep on damaging your proteins and it goes on activating your immune system. So there is inflammation and all kinds of immune problems. Remember that for most of the time, 99.5% of the time that we, that we have been on this planet, we have been living on a planet in the forest. It's only in the last few years that we have started shifting to cities and doing agriculture by cutting the forest. We are switching from natural calories of the forest to glucose calories that come from crops. And this is what is making our immune system weak. There's a very old concept that whatever diseases, like diabetes is a disease that comes from becoming modern. It's called a modern disease. 
you live on rice and you live on wheat, your blood gets so much glucose that the blood glucose becomes high. The insulin cells are no longer able to control it because they have been trying and trying, but by the time they are 40 or 50, they are exhausted. Heart disease is also a disease caused by the glucose in the diet because it injures the capillaries and the arteries. The proteins get glycated by the glucose. So the concept of medicine which is very important to understand is that any disease which is more common in diabetics, whether we are talking about heart disease or gallstones or cancers or obesity, all the tummy problems, if they are caused by increased in patients with diabetes, then they are caused by glucose, the glucose that we have started eating. In fact, they are called modern lifestyle diseases or saccharine diseases. The cause is the blood insulin level is high. The insulin has stopped having much effect on the body. The reason for that is very easy to understand. Tissue is proliferating. The immune system is hyperactive and damaging the body. And all the proteins are also getting damaged by the glucose. And the list of these diseases is very long. Look at the last one. Coronavirus is one of the infections that will be more when our diet is keeping our immune system poor. Just think about your breakfast. Let's say you had some bread and butter. Think of what happens when you digest it and it goes into your intestine. The bread becomes glucose and the butter is fat. There's a pipe for the fat which will take it, it's called lymph duct. And the lymph duct will take it directly into the blood and your body starts using the butter that you ate. But what happens to all the glucose that was in the bread? That will go into the veins. Now supposing you ate 50 grams of glucose as bread, it's no, there's no question of it going into your blood because your blood keeps only 5 grams. The other the 50 grams that you had in your morning meal or whenever lunch or dinner, this has to go to the liver. It has to be made into fat. It has to be converted into butter and then it is going to be put into the bloodstream. This is the job that we give our livers when we become modern, when we start filling up with rice and bread and wheat, with modern glucose foods. We give a job to the liver of looking after our glucose and converting it into oil. When the liver is doing this job, it becomes fatty. When the liver is doing this job, it is not able to keep the blood clean. That is another job of the liver. And the glucose that we are eating is also damaging all the proteins. So, we come back to the old rule that anybody who is becoming fat or diabetic Look at him, he's got many chronic diseases, but his immune system is getting damaged. He's got inflammation because the glucose activates the immune system, he's got damage to his lymphoid cells, he's got all kinds of immune problems because of the glucose in the diet. Let's forget all the myths that are circulating, that the Indian summer can protect you, Malaria we have in India or TB that we have in India will in some way will protect us from coronavirus. All kinds of medicines which are nothing to do with viruses or with coronavirus will in some magical way protect us. We are using all kinds of herbal unproven things thinking that they will charge up our immunity like a battery of a phone. None of this is proven. It's all hope and hype and lack of understanding. Vaccines are not easy to develop. We have not got a vaccine for malaria till now in 100 years. We haven't got a vaccine for HIV in 35 years. That we will be able to magically produce a vaccine overnight. The chances are less than 1%. Some wonder drug that we will produce, chances are less than 1%. Giving plasma will not help because IgG has nothing to do with immunity for viruses. 
we have to do better. We have to go by the way the body is designed and the way it works, and the way the immune system works. Forget all the herbs and decoctions. Exercise can burn some glucose, so your immunity will be better if you are not getting poisoned by the glucose of your food. But if you are sick, at that time the body needs glucose. Glucose is a fuel for the immune system. It uses this as an explosive. At that time, when you are sick, exercise is not helpful. The body needs rest. That's why we get fever and body ache when we have an infection. It's the body's way of telling you, find a corner and take rest, do not move around. And when we rest, that enhances our immunity. In normal times, do not take too much of glucose foods. Try to increase your calorie intake by taking the safer oil and butter, cheese, poultry. These are cal nuts. These are calories which are not glucose. This will prevent your immune system from being activated like it is in diabetics and obese people and becoming dysfunctional and causing all kinds of immunity problems and infections that diabetics get. During infections, yes, you should take glucose, whether it is rice or whether it's kichri or fruits or potatoes, mango shakes, ice creams, comfort foods. Yes, at that time, for a few days, five days, six days, you can help your immunity by giving it the fuel that fights. Don't be waiting for vaccines and all that. Just understand your immune system, read up about it. Once you know how it works, you can augment it, you can augment your knowledge, and the coronavirus is not going to be a threat to your body. Thank you.